And now it's time for What's Hot. We talk about the stories that have us all talking. Today we are joined by Rochelle Fritsch from MilwaukeeMoms.com and Jeff Wagner's back. All right, topic number one. Police are now investigating a murder 16 and a half years after a man was beaten in a downtown parking lot during Summerfest. No suspects have ever been arrested. The victim just recently died and a judge decided to rule the investigation a homicide. This happened Wednesday. Should the case be investigated as a murder? Um, I, I have a question. It's going to sound crazy. What's the difference between a murder and a homicide? Also, if we haven't apprehended anyone, how can we start an investigation that's, you know, been over well, now for 16 years? Well, you know? I get, see, this is kind of difficult because there, there's typically there's a statute of limitations for criminal behavior. There's no statute of limitations mm -hmm. for homicide. Um, but there's all sorts of other categories that are less serious that there would be a statute of limitations for. Um, I, I think, look, I, I'm a big believer in these cold case prosecutions, and it's amazing what they can do. Um, I guess this is one where I would be surprised if you were ever able to either solve this or bring a prosecutable case for something that, that's this old. Um, so I'm not sure how many police resources you really want to devote to it, not because it wasn't a tragic thing, right. just because I don't think you're ever going to be able to bring somebody to justice for this. And I mean, that was one of my concerns. I guess also, as I think about this, I just read recently in the journal about, and, and again, it was a tragic story, a, a man who just succumbed to um, illnesses brought on by a drunken driving accident that happened over 20 years ago. So, I mean, do we apply the same rule to that? Do we find the person who is involved in the drunken driving accident and then charge them with something? I just, I, I don't know. Do you feel it's a slippery slope yeah. here? Well, and you're also going to have, as a practical matter, you're going to have a huge issue with causation because all sorts of things happened to this guy over the course of the last 16 and a half years. Now clearly, you know, his physical slide and deterioration was started as a result of this beating, but that's not necessarily to say that 16 and a half years later, you're going to be able to prove that it was the beating that caused the, the person's death. I mean, sometimes, you know, over the course of 16 and a half years, there's all sorts of medical conditions you right. can develop. Right. So I think it's going to be a difficult, I, I doubt that, I doubt that this is going to go very far. That would be my guess. Well, we'll continue to keep us 20 WTMJ. All right. We aired this last night. It's pretty funny. One guy's <laughs> attempt to buy a burger landed him in jail. Early Saturday morning, an Oak Creek McDonald's employee noticed that the man was intoxicated. So that person called 911. Here's the question. Should a fast food worker report a suspected drunk driver when they're in their fast food lane? Of think? course, yeah. because he's yeah. behind the wheel and he's going to go out and, and drive on the roads and has see, been driving see, on I, the roads. I agree with you completely, but remember a couple weeks ago there was that story about the woman who was the bartender at the American Legion Post? She comes in, you've got the drunk, he walks out, she calls the cops, and she ended up getting fired because they said, well, mm -hmm. you know, we don't want the patrons, you know, we don't want people afraid that the bartenders are going to drop a dime on them. I'm with you. I think this woman did absolutely the right thing. And if she had how would you have felt like if you pick up the paper or you turn on TV the next day and you find out that this guy killed somebody 10 minutes after they went through the drive through Totally agree. Totally agree. Here's something I just want to throw out there. When we think about these fast food places, I mean, there's a couple that say, hey, we're open past 2 o'clock. They are not open for families having a Norman Rockwell dinner. <laughs> They're open for people coming from bars. And if you look at the stats, there's a lot of folks in Wisconsin who don't have a necessarily designated driver. So does this also put the impetus on those restaurant fast food workers that, you know, the guy comes and he slurs his order? Should they be calling too? Well, of course, that, you know, that, that's always the issue. It's, you know, where do you, at, at what point in time do you, you know, not cross the limit? Now, in this case, this guy must have been blasted because I think the blood alcohol came back at 0.18. But um, I, I've had a lot of jobs, candidly, in my life when I was a kid that sucked. I can't imagine <laughs> being a fast food worker at some of these places at 2 o'clock in the morning mm -hmm. at bar time. Can you imagine what these poor people have to deal with? All right, we've got uh, topic number three here. A man has been issued a pair of tickets by police for disturbing the peace after a next-door neighbor reported he was laughing too loud out the window. This is just the latest dispute between these neighbors. Do you think the laugher should have to pay up? It, it sounds like they're really finding ways to get at each other here, these two neighbors. Yeah. Well, I mean, they need it. I, geez, let me put my mom hat on. You don't look at him. You don't look at him. <laughs> Nobody, and just, don't touch each other. Honest to Pete, we don't need to take it to court and write citations. Just, you know, 
be be a grown up and let's just be neighbors and get on with it. Yeah, th these are the, the neighbors from you know where because apparently <laughs> you know that the, the one guy who was complaining about the laughing the the the, ki the guy who's laughing is somewhat disabled. And apparently mm -hmm. he teases him and makes fun of him. And then the other guy responds. The cops are there all the time. I mean, th it's a complete waste of resources mm -hmm. that the police have to keep showing up for this kind of foolishness. So I guess I mean if this is what they got to do to stop it, I'm okay with it. But it should never come to this point. But never. do you think it's really going to stop? Well, that's probably not. No. Prob <laughs> but the, uh, and the judge in this case had the chance to say, "All right, you you be quiet, you be quiet. Let's everybody get along." But he said he wasn't going to dismiss the case, which means he sounds like this. He wants, like you said, to make this an example, right? Because I mean, technically, it, it's probably disorderly conduct or disturbing the peace or something like that. But but the police have more important things to do with themselves, and that's why you just wish people could just grow up sometimes. But these these neighbor disputes get really ugly, and this is one of those classic examples. Yeah, I'm sure they see a lot of this. What do you say about an adult camp? Is that is that what you call it, Jeff? Adult swim. Adult swim. That's <laughs> all. Yeah, adult swim. Yeah, adult swim. All the kids out of the pool. <laughs> Cool. <laughs> yeah, adult swim, right. <laughs> Need a little bit of that here. Yeah, that's right. Thanks a lot, guys. Well, that's it for What's Hot. We will take a quick break and be right back.